Hello and welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Bits. You join me in North Carolina, Scott's in Colorado, and ChargePoint is doing something related to service. Now, Scott did the research on this. She's going to tell us all about what they're doing. I want to complain up front a bit because I think ChargePoint has almost done themselves a disservice in the EV charging space. I think they have really cool software, um, you know, pretty good hardware. But the the thing that always bugs me about ChargePoint is they essentially sell units to third parties. This would be, you know, strip malls, hotels, restaurants, whatever it might be, uh, that are able to own and operate that equipment. However, if they don't purchase the ChargePoint SLA or the service agreement, then there's just a bunch of broken, stranded charge point stations all across the country. We've all seen them. We've all tried to charge at them. And and like it's just kind of given charge point a bad name, even though is that technically charge point's fault because they sold them? Regardless, uh, I feel like charge point is as like from their own perspective, given themselves a lot of reason to have people angry at them just because they put the damn charge point logo on all of their chargers that they don't even own. So Scott, tell us what they're going to do to try to fix and fix this problem, maintain more chargers. And I've got a million questions for you. Okay. Well, I already hate to disappoint you because this is an addition to that warranty. So this is not a service that they're just offering up front. You do have to pay for this on top of the Assure warranty program. Um, they are That's calling so it... What's what's okay. the issue? what what exists up until now? Okay, what currently exists is the Assure program, and so that's where they have like that remote monitoring. Um, they were supposed to respond within a couple of business days. I think it said one business day, um, and then they have like parts and labor warranties. So that was an addition, but you had to qualify by having somebody who is certified with ChargePoint install the charger. Right, now that's pretty common in the charging space. You know, what's, what's interesting about this is uh, up until this point, so much of the public, especially fast charging that most customers are used to using are operated by large ChargePoint operators. Electrify America, EVgo, Tesla, the list goes on and on. Iona now, BP Pulse, blah, blah, blah. Um, those charge point operators generally have large service contracts, either regionally or based by hardware manufacturer with same day or 12 hour, 24 hour SLAs um, that say, okay, that charger is going to work no matter what in a 12 hour period. It means parts are stocked nearby and it's going to absolutely rip. What's interesting about charge point and, it's, and most level two charging stations uh, and increasingly more DC charging is chargers are owned and operated by like one dude. So like think about our charger at the powerhouse, for example, like we don't have a contract with someone to come and fix that charger. That charger is just there. If it breaks, you have to like wait for me to, to, you know, wake up and send to tell somebody to, to call yeah. somebody. It's like not a priority. We don't, we're not a CPO. We'll never be a CPO. That's not our business. However, um, there's, it's still cool that we can own and operate our charger. Now, if we owned a restaurant and we wanted to offer charging for EV drivers, right? When they come okay. and, and they want to, you know, charge while they eat, we could yep. call charge point and say, Hey, you know, is there a local, you know, do we want to offer charging? They would then coordinate the hardware that would be best fit for us, which is coincidentally the hardware they sell. And so they would sell us their hardware. They would find an installer locally or even themselves, but typically a partnered trained installer. And then they would say, hey, why don't you sign up for a two-year plan? And then anything that happens to that charger, you pay us $125 a month or whatever it is, 100 bucks a port. It's really expensive service. I'm, don't quote those numbers, but it's just way too much money. And they're like, oh, well, then we'll fix it. What happens after that contract is up is what the real problem is. And that's what you're discussing here, which is this Assure plan. Do, does it actually quote the pricing for that? Do you have the numbers? 
I don't have the numbers. Um, I don't have the numbers for this program or the other one. And I read all the fine print. So to be determined, unclear. Yeah, it's all negotiated behind closed doors. And it is way too much money. I'm just going to tell everyone that right up front. Yeah. I mean, it covers like parts and labor. And um, they do claim that it'll be fixed in one business day. But it's only available for five years. So after that... I guess you're out of luck. I don't know. Oh, really? Uh, so you can't get that Assure thing unless the charger is five years or younger. Huh. And that's only the Assure program. Now, we haven't even talked about the new program that they're offering, which is the Safeguard Care. And that is, again, I don't have a number on it, but it's an add-on to the warranty. Um, and instead of being reactive to problems, they're trying to be proactive um, so they will have a real live person. I don't know if it's certified by them or what, uh, come and do inspections and they can do it bi-weekly, monthly, or I think even quarterly. Um, mm -hmm. and so they'll offer like cleaning and repairs. Um, but again, how often you want to do it, I would assume makes the price go up a little bit more. That's kind I of what imagine. I gathered. This is kind of an interesting idea. And it, I guess it, in some way, it is more or less like if you're not getting that plug share feedback loop of people mm -hmm. checking in and using the chargers, then it probably is a good idea in some cases to have the chargers looked at. Now, if you're owning and operating a restaurant, you can just look at it or like ask the guy who just you know plugged in, hey, did that work for you? But if you oh, operate, it's the guy. well, whoever, you know, the, X person yes. who plugged in. But if you operate, let's just say, um, you know, you own 50 hotels all in Kansas City and you need someone to go around and make sure all the charging works and you just want that to happen, then this could actually be an interesting idea. And back to my point earlier, there's very few companies that cater to the individual wanting to host charging. Autel's just getting into the space. We have a video going up on them. ChargePoint's been doing it longer than anyone. In Charge, we just had a video go up on them on out of spec reviews uh, at the day this recording goes up. They're much more for fleets. But ChargePoint has owned the market where if you wanted to be an individual to host charging, you would go with ChargePoint up until maybe two or three years ago. They were really the pick. So this is an interesting service. What do they call it again, Scott? It's called Safeguard Care, um, and there is a little fine print. Now, you'll probably be able to answer this, but it is only available for commercial AC chargers. Does that make a big yeah. difference? Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's only for AC charging. So this does not support if you put in DC fast charging. I wonder Correct. if that's because they're already... So I have two questions here. Are they not monitoring AC chargers today in the sense where... That kind of makes sense because so many of them are broken or being removed. I think they're remotely monitoring them, but I don't think they have physical people going and, you know, cleaning them, maintaining them. No. Honestly, sounds like a pretty good job for one of our viewers. Comment below if you think this would be fun to go and test chargers. That's basically what I do for work. I just put it on YouTube rather than talking to a company. That's a really fun job. Um, and then the other question is why not supported for DC charging? Maybe they already have this for DC charging. Maybe it's like included or something. I don't know. Um, but they are rolling it out just in a couple Metro areas. So okay. it was California, Florida, New York, Texas, Massachusetts, and Georgia. And that's oh, wow. it so far. And is it centered around the cities or does that include the whole state? No, it's only centered around the metro areas. So the bigger I like Atlanta, cities. San Francisco, LA. Okay. Okay. Those well, that, I mean, it's a cool idea, actually. I, I wonder yeah. how much they're going to charge for it. I was, I was kind of expecting to, to dunk on charge point here because we'll always take an opportunity to dunk on charge point. Not that we don't like charge point. I've done many great videos with them. We enjoy them, but um, you know, they, they really do themselves a disservice sometimes. And I feel like charge point has like lost its mojo recently. And I'm really hoping they get it back. There was all the news about them going under now they're surviving and now they're making better hardware and better software. And now focusing on this, what I really think Customer they need service. To do, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully they just make chargers 
like I, I really want to see them not try to make money on service, but instead make money on sales. I, I would love to see a free tier of service that their main goal is for the mission of making sure every installed charging port stays active. And that has not been their goal. They they well, had it this easier. This might than help any. their reliability a little bit. I think that's probably the internal plan. Right. It definitely would. I wonder how many people would spring for this. I don't know. It depends on the cost, of course. If they're if saying, I didn't live near my charger, I would do this. Totally agreed. I think that's that's certainly yeah, definitely great for an, <laughs> from an operator standpoint. Um, but but I do think. Like there's so many things ChargePoint had right from a business standpoint, which they had it easier than anyone in the sense because they produced the hardware and sold the hardware at full cost. They did not own and operate the hardware unless it made financial sense for them. Uh, and so there's many sites in Colorado that are actually owned and operated by ChargePoint as a CPO. And they just did that with straight up grant money. Unless they were getting the full thing funded, they sold the hardware at full price to whoever was installing them. And then they still almost went out of business, which I can't figure out. Um, but I have to say, I have a lot of friends that work at ChargePoint. They let us use their labs. Like they're great people. I just don't know how they can burn through so much cash. It is unbelievable. These numbers are gonna be so, could be a lot. Could be a lot. I don't know what to expect, but back on the topic <laughs> of servicing, cool idea. Um, I'd be really interested to see if other companies follow suit. Uh, for example, Autel saw ChargePoint's business of selling chargers and the backend activation method and, and servicing. Um, they're doing that through their enterprise division here in the US. Uh, again, we, I just I only bring them up because I just researched it and did a video on it that'll go up soon. And I wonder if ChargePoint's gonna feel some pressure from increased competition. Um, I hope so. I think competition's great in this space. Tesla is doing a really good job with their wall connector program. They have a whole commercial program with great backend servicing as well. So I hope it puts some pressure on ChargePoint. I'd love to see rather than an additional paid option, even though I do believe this new tier is a great uh, paid option for many people to good go service. For. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. This is this is a reasonable service to charge for. All of the remote monitoring and quick and easy service should just be, you bought the units, we're here to support you. That should be no extra. Um, pay for parts, whatever it might be. That's my right. view. But um, I agree with that. yeah, Scott, have you been to a charge point station yet in your Rivian? Yes, I have. I went to two different ones in Steamboat. So I went to the fast charger and then I went to a level two charger. And how was that experience for you? Uh, well, it stopped charging. So it oh, was really? great. Yeah, I had my car set to 100% and it stopped charging, I think at 80%. So it said there was an error. Okay, well, that's why you need this remote <laughs> monitoring. Yes, because then I would have known, hi, stop. So yeah. <laughs> Is that your dog? Yes, he's going crazy. <laughs> Okay, well, I think that's about it. So that's a cool little service. So basically you can get the chargers and then you can get no support for free. You can get probably some remote monitoring for a certain period of time for a certain- And a fix in one business day. But that feels like another tier, Does, is, don't you think? No, there's just regular, assure, safeguard care. Interesting. That's it. Okay, yeah. well, I mean, that sounds, sounds pretty good then. I think it's a great idea. I, I, I forgive me for dunking on charge points so hard, but sometimes I feel like one, every six months I just got to start taking stabs at people. <laughs> it's their time again. I think so. We were too nice to them because they let us use their lab for the lucid gravity and their charger didn't quite give the gravity everything it wanted. They were giving me 399 kilowatts. The gravity wanted 405 and I let that one slide. So I feel like I got to dunk on them here. Okay. <laughs> well, I think it's a cool program and I enjoyed researching it. So yeah, yeah. totally. Shout out to AJ over there uh, for sending us the press release and um, def definitely cool. If anyone owns and operates charge point units and is going to use this uh, service, let us know how it goes. Let us know how long they take at each unit. I'd really be curious to see yeah. what they check what you know what that charge looks for because I, I, I you know you mentioned they're gonna clean it. they're going to, 
inspect the handles. They're going to do a test charge, I saw as well. Are they actually bringing an electric car to charge or are they bringing a resistor box to plug in or how's that going to work? That is unclear, but I do know that they will test the charge. So what's a resistor box? Is it just um, like so a, they're, it tells it's like you a suitcase. Yeah, a suitcase with some like hot dog fryers in it that you can charge for a short period of time and it just, you know, burns off as heat. Okay. Yeah. So I wonder, it doesn't make a difference. It's just a resistive load bank, but um, that could be kind of cool. So yeah, I'd be curious to learn more about how they're doing this. I'm sure if we asked ChargePoint, they'd tell us. So if viewers are really interested for us to dig into this obscure topic, well, Scott can do it. I will call them. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, uh, Scott, you got anything more on this topic for us? Nope. I just like proactive solutions as opposed to reactive solutions. So I appreciate that. I still don't know how it's proactive. Because a person is coming either biweekly or monthly or quarterly, no matter what. And they're just okay. inspecting everything. So that's but like proactive. it's either broken or it's not broken. Right, so you're proactively checking throughout the month or the week. Or no, you, you would only reactively check if something's broken, wouldn't you? No, you check and see if it's broken. If it is broken, then you react and you fix it. And it's if a it's reaction. not broken, if it's not broken, then you're being proactive and you're like, ah, unit number one is good, you know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I still think it's a great idea. So yeah. anyway, maybe I'm just in a bad mood. Anyway, sorry, charge point. We love you. <laughs> And uh, thank you all for watching another Out of Spec Bits episode. Thank you, Scott, for doing the research on this one. Looking forward to thank more. Thank you for joining me. Yeah. We'll all right. See you all. See you all another one again soon. Goodbye.